Hello, uh, my name is Chris Eaton. I'm the 3D printing technician. Uh, I'm going to go through with today um, the Prusa Slicer software that we're going to be using to 3D print our parts. Uh, this is a free software to download, so feel free to download it to your laptop um, and you can play about with your settings, which I'm going to go through anyway. Um, so we're using the Prusa i3 MK3 uh, because there's different ranges of Prusas, uh, Prusa Minis, Prusa Resins, uh, Prusa Mark IIs. So you have to make sure you select the right the right setting or you won't it won't be able to print properly um so this is your build plate so this is where you can print your parts so you're limited to size so you have to be careful how big and how small you want to print um so you can generate your part from a solidworks model which you can then save as an stl file or you can download your scanning model, which we can do a scan and import it directly as an STL file onto the build plate. Um, there's different ways of doing it. So um, once you've saved your file, either a SolidWorks or a scan, you can then go to import model, find your relevant model. So we either do a, a scan or the model from SolidWorks. You click open. Okay, there's, there's your part. You can move around the bed anywhere you, where you want to put it. So if you want multiple parts, you can you can put them in nicely arranged. Uh, and if, it, if the, the part turns blue, that means it's off the print bed and it won't print. So you have to make sure your part is green. So, so your part's there in the center. Now, what you can do, you can orientate your part so you want as much surface area on the bed as possible that is to minimize support because the prusa only has one nozzle so if it's going to build support it has to build support with the pla or the material that you're using so you're gonna to have to peel it off and it could damage your part it could leave a rough surface so that you need to find the best way of orientating this now this is the best way to orientate it with zero supports but I will show you what it's like with, with supports. So if we rotate, rotate this like, like, like that. So if we were to slice this model, it's gonna have support all the way underneath here from the build plate upwards because it can't print in fresh air. So it has to have support. So what I'll do, I'll slice the model and you'll see where the supports. So it needs support all under here where it's gone blue. That means it has to have support. So that is not a good print. So what we can do, you can go back into your model and you can re-rotate it. To flat on the build plate. Um, these are your your printing quality, so you can go 0 0.05 for ultra detail, where it's going to be a really nice finish, or you can go 0.3 of a millimeter, which it's not going to be a degraded finish, but if it's just um, a prototype, that's that's the best one because it's going to be a quick print. 0 0.5 will take a long time, but generically we stick with 0 0.15 as a quality print. Uh, your material. We're using the Prusament PETG, but you can select any any material that you like. That's that's in this in this file. Uh, these are all already preloaded into the Prusa. As soon as you download the software, these are already in. <coughs> um, so if you're using a material that's not called Prusa, you have to say it's generic um, because it's different print settings. But we're using PETG. And we're using the Mark III. Uh, we've selected supports as none because we don't need supports. Infill, if you were to cut that part in half, you'll see a honeycomb structure. That is a that is a percentage infill. So if, if you want something that's really strong, it has to withhold any force, then you need to increase your infill maybe to 60, 70, 80%. 
Um, but if it's nothing that is going to be under stress, then there's no need to print that much of an infill. So 15% is more than enough. <coughs> um, so once you're happy with, with your print and you've got your files and you've, you're happy with your setup, uh, you can add a brim if you like. That just gives it an extra extra adhesive to the bed. It will it will print a small layer, which your part is stuck to, to make sure extra security to make sure your part doesn't come off the bed. Um, we do use an, a glue a glue adhesive spray, which we spray on the bed, but we'll see that in in the later videos. Uh, so once you're happy with your part, we press slice. This will now generate. So as you can see, that's your brim. That's your green layer brim, which helps you stick to the stick to the bed. Um, then we can see a sort of time lapse, uh, layer by layer, the way it's going to print. So you can see it printing. So that's the honeycomb structure I was talking about. That's the fifteen percent infill. If I was to make that bigger infill, that'd be more inside there. So as you can see, and there's your part finished. Also at the bottom here, it's, it will tell you exactly how much material you're using in in meters. So you, this this is going to be using 4.92 meters of filament, and it's estimated it's going to be one hour 47 minutes for that one print. Um, once, once you're happy with all your setup, all your settings, making sure your layers are fine, and there's no errors. What we do, we export the G code, and then we put, we, we, you save it onto the um, micro SD card that comes with the Prusa, and then in the next video, you're going to see how we load the the part and how how it's printed and we'll do a video uh, before, during and after the print so you can see the full process.